Uh, amendment uh, two to House Bill or Senate Bill number 780. Uh, this this amendment actually, this amendment would, would fix the bill as far as I'm concerned for my district. Um, if we pass if we pass the uh, the amendment, but after I had the amendment drawn up, um, I remembered about the meeting we had back in January when we all went into this Supreme Court building. We discussed about how judicial district was going to affect our districts, all of our districts, or a lot of us, 50 plus members went in there. And that I, I remembered the feeling that I had, the, the almost violation I felt that they were affecting my district and I had no input whatsoever. And so this amendment, this amendment would actually take me out of the equation if it were passed. But you know, they took a lot of you guys out of the equation. You know, the bill that was originally introduced, it affected basically every district in the state, all 31 districts. But they realized that after they did that, and we had our meeting in that Supreme Court building that day, they couldn't pass it because too many of us stood unified, hand in hand, arm in arm, stood unified against the bill. The people that constructed the bill decided to change it, where it would only affect six district. My district is one of those districts. Now, would it be quite fair if I were to introduce an amendment? If I were to introduce an amendment, take me out of that. Would I be walking away from the other five? I ask you guys this one thing. We stood united that day. We stood as one body. We were going to fight this judicial redistricting because it affected all of us. But now it doesn't affect you. I could opt myself out with this amendment. Is that right? I was against it that day, just like you were against it that day, and I'm against the bill now. Madam Speaker, I move to withdraw my amendment, and I ask each of you to vote this bill down. Without objection, amendment number two, withdrawn. Next amendment. I renew my no motion. further amendments. Chairman Mr. Lumberg renews his motion. Discussion on the bill, Representative Matheny. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Folks, I found out about this plan about five minutes after I addressed the Public Defenders Conference in Kingsport, Tennessee. I received a courtesy call from the clerk to tell me that the Senate had released a plan and the House had nothing to do with it, and he wanted to give me some heads up. And that plan was atrocious. Since then, they've gone back and made some changes, I agree, and they've mitigated some of your problems. <clears throat> There's several questions that I've not been able to have answered. Number one, is our entities going to be, and, I, and this will be to the sponsor, I have some comments, but this will be a question to the sponsor if he'll please answer it. Is there anything in effect that will hold entities harmless that are currently in judicial districts that have sprung up over the last 30 years to support the activities of judicial district drug task forces, children's advocacy centers, and the actual judicial system itself? These people have building programs, they have staff, they have long-term financial obligations to their territories, is anybody going to hold them harmless if they're overlapped with existing resources that already cover those? That is a question I would like to answer. Sure. The expectation is nothing will happen with some of those because they have long-term contracts, i.e. CASA, uh, with some of their facilities. So that will... That's not the concern that's coming out of my district. Also, predictability in the process. When we redistrict, we had a full two years. Plus, we knew it was coming eight to ten years in advance. It was in our minds. We knew that as we were preparing for an election. Why force this down a branch of government's throat within four months? Now, I'm going to say that I am from Coffee County. We do have a small district. But predictability in the process is what is needed here. When I speak to my DAs and my clerk and my folks in the judicial system in Coffee County, they understand that we're going to have to have a bigger district. They disagree with the fact that the rest of the state is subsidizing us. And I can back up those facts uh, just in child support collections. We, we are much above state average in many areas in our child support collections. That benefits the constituents because my folks have had a little bit more time to work on those. The caseloads are not necessarily any heavier. And I would also like to say if we're going to come back and do phase two of this plan, which should actually be phase one in January, why don't we do that? Why make this change and then decide what changes we need? Why not do what we have to do in January, decide what changes we have to have made, then put some predictability in the process, let all the interested parties come forward just like they do in the legislative redistricting process, put their plans forward, 
Let's be able to vote on them. Let's be able to debate on them. Let's exercise our authority as an equal chamber, not as a subservient chamber in the House or in, in the legislature. We are just as equal as the folks across the hall. And all we're doing is playing catch up to nearly everything. This is, a, this is another instance where we can exercise our authority to be independent legislators, represent our constituency, and not necessarily represent the Senate. And comptroller study in 2009, just want to remind you, look at item four, and it specifically says this is a study that our state authorized three years ago, and they say this is not needed. So we're telling the comptroller's office they're wrong, we're telling the judicial branch, many of them, that they're wrong with their negotiations. We're telling the Senate, though, that they're right. That's who we're telling is right. Once again, I'm from Coffee County. Yes, I'm proud to be. Do we think there needs to be some changes? We don't know. We don't know until all the facts are done. Are we willing to make some changes once all the proper evidence is presented to us? Absolutely. If it's fair and it's equitable and everybody else in the state has to react to that, you better believe we'll re react to that. And uh, folks, I would ask that you please remember that you are elected independently, not in conjunction with a senator. You belong to a chamber that is autonomous. Believe it or not, it really is. You belong to a branch of government. Believe it or not, it is autonomous. You can do something without somebody else approving it first and exercise that authority. We don't do it often enough in this chamber. Thank you. Representative Curtis. <laughs> to the weeds of this bill you, behind the judicial redistricting lives that are affected. Federal government monies are affected. And as my friend from over in West Tennessee has said before, we can bark and we heard from everybody at the very beginning. I'm against it, I'm against it, I'm against it. It reminds me of the story of 1765 with the Stamp Act. When everybody was going to be affected, so everybody rose up against it. So what did we do? We tapered it back. We tapered it back to, to steal some words from my good friend here that says the one percenters don't matter. We don't, we don't listen to the, the voice of the one percenters. So what we've done is we've come here and we take this, redudic this redistricting, redistricting and we've made it so it doesn't affect many of you. So your attitude now can be, well, guess what? It doesn't affect me, so I guess I'm okay with it. You know, I would be better off with a plan if we would come back with a plan. If we start this thing next year and we start and we put something in place that we know that every 10 years maybe we'll look at this. We have to run every two years. We know that. There are things in place. Let's put something in place so there's a standard. One of the th key things that I think that we're leaving out is a study that was done by the comptroller's office not many years ago. We spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on this report. And when it came back, guess what? They said we need to do nothing. Things are in order. Things are in place. Members, I stand here today in the final hours where, yes, you must make this decision. And I know a lot of us are sitting in our chairs because this is a very difficult decision. Some of us don't even want to cast the vote for us. I encourage you, I remind you, if we do nothing, if we do not pass this bill, everything will be okay. We can come back and we can set a structure. We can put something in place. We can build upon a foundation that we can start. And we can say every 10 years or every 5 years or every 20 years, whatever the case may be, we can have that structure in place. With that, I humbly ask you to vote no on this bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative Sanderson, you yielded to Representative Wargo. You're recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, will the sponsor yield? I yield. Uh, Representative Lundberg, Chairman Lundberg, I had several questions. And I'm, I'm looking at my questions and I'm thinking, I, I don't really want to ask you the questions now because to me, the bill is not about the merits that you've been talking about. It really has nothing to do with what you're talking about. 
because the bill's just really a terrible bill. It's a, well, it's a poorly thought out bill. But I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this, and, I, and I'll, I, I, when we leave here, when we leave this session today, I don't want this session, this moment, to be remembered as the last day or the last fleeting moments. I want this, this session and this bill and this vote, it means much, much more. Representative in the well did not answer Representative Wargo's question when asked where did the bill originate. He did not. He sidestepped the question. He did not answer it. He talked about a lot of other things. This bill, friends and colleagues, came from the Senate. Plain and simple. It was drawn in the upper chamber. My friends, we are the people's chamber. We are the people's chamber. They are the upper chamber. Now, I'm telling you something. We've been told from the start of this session when we're going to when we're going to begin and when we're going to end. They say they're going to leave us here if we go on long. They're leaving today, and it doesn't matter come what happens. We could be by ourselves. They have been dictating to us from the get-go how this session runs. And let me tell you something. This bill was crammed down our throat by the good representative up here on the well, but he did not draw the bill. The bill was drawn over there. It was given to us and said, you can like it or you can lump it. Now, friends, let's draw a line in the sand today and say, we stand united at the people's chamber. We will not be told anymore how long to stay. We will not be told how we redistrict our own districts. Friends, I ask you, let's say it. Let's say it because we've all thought it. Let's say it. Vote no on the bill because it's not our bill. Camper I. Lam Lambert High. Mr. Clerk, take the vote. All right, 68, 25, and 8. Previous question prevails. Does any member wish to change their votes? Mr. Clerk, take the vote. Ayes 28, 66 and 8, one president not voting. Senate Bill 780 having failed to receive the Constitution majority. I re refer it to calendar and rules. No? There is, is there a motion to reject? Representative Matheny? I move to reject the bill, Madam Speaker. There is a motion to reject. Pursuant to Rule 63, that motion will lie over until the next legislative day. Mr. Kirk, place on the heel of the next regular calendar. Next bill. Madam Speaker,